We are so back, boys. Masters of the Air finally balances the characterization and action into a perfect blend that leaves you wanting more. This episode felt like it was over before it even began. A lot of the time I can tell that a show is not capturing my attention if I start checking my phone for messages or stopping the video to browse tomorrow's weather forecast. Not this week. This week I was sucked right in and when the screen went black I had to wiggle the mouse to make sure that the video was actually at the end. Thankfully, the narrator is back from their annual leave and doing overtime to add context to a number of scenes. How I missed that guy. However, as with most things, there is still room for improvement. A couple of strange production choices that put a minor blemish on an otherwise perfect landing. Plot points that were seemingly reaching a crescendo last episode are bizarrely totally absent from this week's episode. Some of the story threads that I was heaping praise upon not seven days ago have gone by the wayside and I'm worried that with only four more episodes, they won't be picked up again. I'm willing to go as high as an eight this week. They got that action and drama balance oh so close to the perfect mix. If we could just get a little more time on the ground, I could be talked into a 10. But judging by next week's sneak peek, we could be headed in that direction. Before we get into the spoilers, I want to thank each and every one of you who has subscribed. I recently hit 100 subscribers, something I didn't think would happen. I know it's not much, but it means a lot to me, so to you I say thank you. And now onto the spoilers. Bucky's missing his bestie Buck. All this Buck and Bucky business is making me miss Buck Compton from Band of Brothers even more. Buck just wants to get back up there and bomb some Germans. Crosby's plane didn't get shot down after all. They just couldn't make it back to their own airbase, so had to catch a truck from another airbase that didn't have a telephone. We get a description of what happened to the plane and the men in it, but again, I'm left wondering who these people are. Does anyone know who Douglas is? My understanding is that Masters of the Air is based off a book by Crosby, so it can get a little awkward when the narrator goes off on a tangent telling us all about how everyone loved what a great navigator he is, and what a swell guy he was who everyone loved. We get it, mate. You're totes amazeballs. This happens a couple of times this episode. One such example is Crosby's mate telling him how he had written a letter to his wife to inform her of his death, but it got all flowery about how no one could ever replace him. I get it, I'd say the same thing about my mate if he went missing, but to then tell him to his face when he comes back, nah, I'd be ripping into him. This guy conveniently keeps the letter so Crosby can read it later on and hear again all about how awesome he is. Anyway, Crosby's crew gets back to their barracks and some other guys are in their beds. I didn't realise they were still getting reinforcements. Anyway, it looks like the rationing wasn't affecting the Air Corps, as this guy looks like he's been in a good paddock. Things definitely are bigger in America. What, was that guy some producer's brother or something? What a chungus. So Crosby's crew head back to the bar and Bubbles is getting name dropped and heapings of affection out of nowhere. So you know he's going to bite the big one this episode. Crosby's being promoted to group navigator, so now he needs those pats on the back more than ever. Can someone tell me what the point of showing the coffee getting spilled on the plans was? Comment below if you're smarter than I. The big issues of this episode seem to be the lack of men and planes. This leads to men being assigned to new planes with stupid names like Old Grandad and Papa's Mustache. The second issue is that they are now flying day after day instead of having a day off between missions. Third, they are now bombing even closer to civilians, and even blurring the lines of who counts as a civilian. It seems even contributing to the war effort is considered being a valid target. The shadows under the planes always look off to me. Is it just because they're the wrong level of darkness, or do they not get more diffuse the further away the object casting the shadow is? Can anyone clear this up in the comments section please? I noticed that the music does a lot of the heavy lifting this episode, really setting the tone for a lot of these shots. It's never really been noticeable to me before this episode. The low droning during the mission briefing imparting a sense of dread. The military style march when the planes are taxiing on the runways. All serving to get you in the mood for some action. I really enjoyed the first section of this bombing mission as we tended to keep with the one plane and its crew. Of course, it had to be marred by shots in the volume adding that awful purple pink tint to the footage. I really have come to despise these shots as they just drag you straight out of any kind of emotional investment. It's the modern version of a bad green screen effect, like old movies have when Humphrey Bogart is supposed to be driving a car. The bombing action is much better when you follow one plane and watch as they witness their compatriots slowly be whittled away, first by flak, then by fighters. The sense of dread when the flak slows and the waiting for the fighters begins 
is enhanced by being able to witness the change in mood of the crew. Again, the music works wonders to really heighten the adrenaline charged atmosphere. It's such a great feeling to actually care about people in an episode of Masters of the Air. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end and Bucky's plane starts losing engines faster than a really fast thing. Once they all bail out, we start switching from plane to plane as they start dropping like flies. I don't know what song they start humming, I couldn't pick out the tune, but it seems to build morale so I guess it's a good thing, not just that the pilot has lost his marbles mid-mission. Someone explain this to me, I beg of you. There's a couple of surreal shots that seem counter to the realistic depictions so far. One shot has debris raining from the sky, but it seems so weightless, almost like they're underwater. Later, we see a pilot looking out the window as a German fighter flies by, and time almost slows to a crawl, allowing the two pilots a chance to look the enemy in the eye. A strange choice, as there is no apparent reason for this time dilation to be occurring. Only one plane from the entire 100th makes it back and those poor buggers when they have to sit through their post-mission interrogation. You can't help but feel sorry for them, having to recount what happened to the rest of their group. This is the kind of thing I want to see more of. Real human emotions, but relatable, grounded. Next week's episode looks like a doozy, almost wholly on the ground from what the preview showed. Lots of character development, lots of tension. I'm excited. As I said, I'm giving episode 5 of Masters of the Air an 8 out of 10. I've taken a mark off, mainly due to not addressing the loss of Buck in a satisfactory manner. We only really get Bucky joining the next mission and a message on a bomb. Maybe you can count the swapping of Bucky's jacket, but that's pretty weak source. Also, we ditched Quinn and what's-his-name in the train, just as they were about to have to pass a German checkpoint. I love the bombing mission in this episode, which is rare for me. Maybe it's because we focused really hard on Bucky's plane and its crew. I feel this is evidenced by the fact that it kind of lost the level of tension it had once Bucky's plane was shot down. There was also those two brief instances of slow motion that really came out of nowhere. It's like the editors just found the speed dial in Adobe Premiere and had to use it. Again, we get a new character that is the focus of a significant part of the first act, who then dies in the third act. It's becoming a trope of this show, and I hope it ends here. I was joking when I said that Helen wasn't needed now that Nash is dead, but I guess they went one step further and completely removed the coffee and donut girls. There weren't even any refreshments at the post-mission interrogation, but I really like the balance between dialogue and action in this episode of Masters of the Air. Combined with some great sound design, it made for a very enjoyable episode. Onward and upward. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.